What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to talk about creating a forgot password flow. Let's imagine that a user has forgotten their password, right? Now the problem of course is that since we haven't stored their password in plain text, but rather we've stored the password in a, this hashed version of itself, we can't simply send the user back their password. So what we ultimately need to do is create some kind of a flow that your users can go through in order to actually be able to reset their password. Typically this flow involves them, you know, giving us their email address, us sending a link to that email address, them clicking on a link that's in that email address, and then it kind of reset in their password, right? And so that's actually what this video is all about. Now, if you'd like to follow along, you can actually find all the necessary boilerplate down in the description box below. I have a link to the GitHub repository that has all the starter code, as well as to a code sandbox, which will just allow you to kind of get up and running very easily. So let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is actually create an endpoint that our users can basically send in their email address. And if the email address does in fact exist, we're going to send them an email with a unique identifier to their email address that they have given us, right? If it, assuming that it exists within our system. So I've just pasted in some code. We're creating a post request that's going to go to slash forgot. And in the method handler, we're basically going to do the following. First thing, we're going to basically call the get user function that I've created, which will basically go through our get user or our users table and find if and check basically if a user that has this email that was just sent to us actually exists in our system. If it does, what we're going to do is we're going to create this ID. In other words, it's really going to be an UID. And then we're going to create this request object that has the ID and the email of this user that has just requested the request password. And the reason why we're doing this is because we basically want to allow the user to uniquely identify themselves on the, on the subsequent request, right? Because of course, this user doesn't actually have a password now. They can't get, right? They, they've forgotten the password. Therefore, they can't get a token because they can't actually log in, but they want to actually be able to reset their password. We don't want to just let anybody reset their password. We have to make sure that they are who they say they are. So what we do is when we find that the email does in fact exist in our system, we send this unique ID along in the email to them. So now this becomes their unique identifier, but we have to store it in our own records to make sure that it matches based on what we have in our system. So therefore, we create this request object that has the two keys, the ID that we sent to the user plus the email of the user that we've just sent it to. Then we actually create this uh, object in our database. So we go to like our, so I have this table called like requests or like um, password requests. That's basically where we're going to store it. And then finally, we actually send out the email uh, to the actual user's emails. And then we can very simply see here, I'm actually using AWS to send the email, but you can use whatever you want, whether you want to use NodeMail or SendGrid. Um, I think there's something called MailChimp, or if you want to use AWS, that's totally fine. But the most important thing to take away from what we actually send in the email is a link to the actual page that's going to have the form where they can reset their password. And that link has to include the ID. So in other words, we're going to go to localhost 3000 slash reset slash ID. The actual ID that the user will have to send back to us must be included in that URL. And once we get to the client side code, it'll make more sense as to why that ID has to be there. But this is what the email must include at a bare minimum. You got to include this link for the actual page that's going to have the, page, the, the form to reset the password. And the URL must include the ID that we've just created. That basically takes care of the endpoint that we have in order to actually uh, sort of start the reset password flow. This is where the user says, hey, I forgot my password. Can you help me out there? So now basically the user will click on that link, right? And then when they click on the link, they're going to be met with a form, which we're all going to, we're going to work on that part of it soon. Met with a form where they can kind of fill in their new password. And when they hit submit, now we have to actually go ahead and reset their password. That does, that's where this next endpoint kind of comes into play. So here we have a patch request that's going to go to slash reset. And then basically what we need to do in this particular request is we're basically going to send in two things in the body. The first thing is we're going to send in this ID that we've just sent to them in the email. So in other words, in the email, we sent this unique um, ID. So now when we go to slash reset, we have to take this ID and send it back down to the server to identify who's the one that's trying to actually reset their password. This is how the user can uniquely identify themselves that they are a legitimate user of our system. Because if the ID doesn't match in our system, well, then obviously they're not who they say they are because we have an ID actually stored in our own records to match up with the one that the user is going to send to us so that they can identify themselves. We get this request by checking the, uh, the, the request table based on the ID. If the request actually exists, then we get the user based on the request uh, email, because again, not only did we store the ID, we also stored the email. We get the user based on their email again. And then now we can very, very simply just do a basic update. We just go ahead and take the new password that the user has sent in to us. We do another hash over it by calling the bigcrypt.hash method. And then we get the new hash password. And on this user, we basically just say user that password is equal to the new hash. So we've effectively just updated the password. Call, go ahead and call update user. So in other words, we basically call to our database to update the user again. This whole database is all just in local memory, but the concept will be the same. You're actually going to do a simple edit in your table with the user's new password. And then we just go ahead and send back a status of 204, basically indicating that the resource has been successfully updated. 
But if the request doesn't exist, we're just going to go ahead and say a 404. The resource wasn't found because obviously if you're just trying to send in some ID to a system that doesn't actually exist, we're not going to let you reset the password. We don't know who you are. You're probably somebody with malicious intent. So we're just going to send back a 404. The resource doesn't exist. That basically takes care of all the necessary server side code. Now we can actually move into the client side code. As you can see here, I already have three routes. I've got the login page. I've got the private page, the one that you can only get to if you have already logged in. And then I've got the sign up page. Now let's go ahead and add the forgot password page as well as the reset password page. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this forgot password. Okay, so here we have all the code necessary in order to create the forgot password flow. So it's really nothing more than a simple React component that's just going to render this form right over here that has an input where the user is going to be prompted to give us their email address. And then when they actually click on the button here in, within the form, they're going to call this submit handler here. And then all that's really going to happen is we're going to make a post request to slash auth slash forgot. We're going to pass the user's email in to the body. And then once we get the response back from the server, we're just going to go ahead and say set email sent is equal to true. So this email sent variable here that's in my state will get set to true. And when that gets set to true, we're just going to send the, the user a simple message on screen saying, hey, an email with reset instructions is on its way. So that handles the actual forgot password uh, page. Now we need to go ahead and create the reset password page. So in other words, once a user has actually um, emailed us or sent or, or sent us the email telling us that they forgot their password, they're going to get a link to their email. When they click on that link, they need to end up somewhere. So where are they going to end up? Well, that's going to be to the reset password page. So let's go ahead and create that. So this is all the code that's necessary for the actual reset password flow. Now, again, the way that you get to this page will be based on the link that you have in your email. You click on the link. This is the page that you met with. And what you're going to find on screen is very simply going to be a single input that's going to ask the user for their new password. And then when they type in the new password, they'll go ahead and click submit or they'll click save, which will take us to the submit handler. Now, this submit handler is basically the same as all others, except one tiny difference here, which is kind of an important one. And that is that besides for just passing in the password that we simply pull out of state that exists within our form, we're also going to have to grab the ID that's going to exist in the in the params, right? So this is going to be uh, done through React Router. When we actually set up the route to come to this page, we're basically going to say that the URL to come to this page will be slash reset slash colon ID, which basically represents that we're going to have a parameter within our URL that's, that's, that's name will be ID, right? And that's going to be the unique identifier that we're going to have to send back to the server to uniquely identify who this user is that's trying to reset their password. We're going to pull that out from the params that ID, and then we build up this body that has the password and the ID, make a patch request to slash auth slash reset, passing in the body. And if it's successful, if this ID actually exists, and we can actually update the user and, and save their new password, we can then go to props that history that push, we can go back to the login screen. And now they should be able to log in with their new password. So as you can see here, we have the two imports that we need. We've got the forgot password being imported, we've got the reset password being imported. And we also have the corresponding routes generated right down here. We've got a route that's going to go to slash forgot that's going to render the forgot password. And then we've got a route that's going to go to slash reset slash colon ID that's going to go ahead and render the reset password component. And again, that slash colon ID is going to be the parameter that's going to be the unique identifier that's going to exist within the link that we send in the email to the user. And that's what the user will have to then send back on the patch request to identify themselves who they are. And then this way we know which email address, which users, which user's password to actually update in our system. Okay, so now let's see all of our work in action. So to get this application started, let's head on over to the terminal, type yarn dev. This will simultaneously bring up both the backend and the front end servers at the same time. We can then head on over to localhost 3000 and we should immediately get met with the login screen. Now I should point out that the actual localhost 3000, the root URL of this application is where the private page lives. So on that private page is where actually check for the token. So if you don't have a token, you're immediately gonna get sent back to the login screen. So the goal is to be the goal right now is to kind of be able to log in so that we can actually see what's on the private page, right? So let's actually uh, create an account. We'll say that the, the uh, email for me the email address will be real tough guy, password will be password, and then I'll go ahead and create an account. So now let me actually try to sign in, but uh oh, I think I forgot my password. But that's okay because I've just created a forgot password flow, right? So let's go ahead and click, click on the forgot password flow or link. And I'm going to say that my email was realtoughguy@gmail.com, and then we're going to go ahead and get a reset link. So once we get the reset link, we can head on over to, their, uh, to my email address right over here. And then as you can see, I have an email that's waiting for me from codingwithchaim@gmail.com, and it basically says if you want to reset your password, please click on this link, and it tells me to go to localhost 3000 slash reset slash this unique ID that we've just generated for this request. You click on this link, and then we are met with this new form that's basically prompting us to put in a new password. So previously my password was actually the word password. Now I'm going to say that my password is equal to QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, hit save. 
And now we can actually go ahead and sign in with the new password. So let's go ahead and say that we're signing in with uh, Azrael Tough Guy. The new password is now QWERTY. Hit sign in. And now you can actually see we're on the private page. You can see my face kind of coming up nicely, which is indicating that we are actually in the on the private page. And the cool thing is we've actually just signed in using the new password, the newly updated password, and that's the old password, which, which basically means that our entire update password flow has been working correctly. Well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do drop a like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week in another video.